action, like Peter's, is to withdraw in the face of the demands of living the gospel. What motivates us to choose to be faithful despite the cost to self is Jesus' promise of new life and God's continued love and presence as we journey toward the fullness of life. The celebrant of this Mass is Father Wheeland. Please join in the entrance hymn, hymn number 791, Lift High the Cross. Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, every good thing comes from you. 
Fill our hearts with love for you. Increase our faith. And by your constant care, protect the good you have given us. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. You duped me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. You were too strong for me, and you triumphed. All the day I am an object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Whenever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage is my message. The word of the Lord has brought me derision and, repro and reproach all the day. I say to myself, I will not mention him. I will speak in his name no more. But then it becomes like fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it in. I cannot endure it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm today is, My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you. O oh God, you are my God who I seek. For you, my flesh pines and my soul thirsts, like the earth, parched, lifeless, and without water. Thus have I gazed toward you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied, and with exultant lips my mouth shall praise you. You are my help, and in the shadow of your wings I shout for joy. My soul clings fast to you. Your right hand upholds me. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I urge you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, your spiritual worship. Do not conform yourselves to this age, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and pleasing and perfect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in your heart may you proclaim the gospel in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. with you and also with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew glory to you O Lord Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised 
Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit would there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> It's interesting to think about the great icon that is present and has been present for 2,000 years, symbolizing more than any other icon, the core of our faith, namely the cross of Jesus. And aren't we fortunate to have as our parish the title Holy Cross? when we think of this greatest of all icons, the greatest image that stands to tell all the world what we stand for. Imagine beyond our own immediate Holy Cross, the number of churches or schools or Catholic institutions and institutions of Christians of other stripes where a cross is displayed worldwide and going back to the earliest days. Imagine the number of people who wear a cross, professed religious of yesterday's vintage especially, but even some today, where the cross is one of the marks of who they are and what they stand for. And on and on we could go. But as we think of these various settings in which the cross is emblazoned for our study, for our good example, our inspiration, we have also something to think about by way of next month, the official church's feast of the Holy Cross, which has special meaning again for us here in our parish by that name. I'd like to just take for a moment the prophecy of Jesus not a prophecy going way back in Old Testament times to somebody like Isaiah or Jeremiah, but Jesus himself, who along with being our Messiah, and Son of God, is, is the greatest of all prophets. And he, in today's gospel selection, is prophesying several things about himself, including his death. He said to the disciples how he must go up to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Now he doesn't say, I'll be killed in the form of crucifixion. He, he doesn't mention the cross in so many words, but we know that the 
implication is there. And that kind of brings us around to thinking about ourselves and the crosses that we must bear. Crosses are not just external reminders of what Jesus is, who Jesus is and what he stands for, but they are very, very personal reminders to us about the carrying of one's cross. And finally, as we look at this very deeply, even in these very few minutes, as we look at it very deeply, we can discover that the way we address in our dialogue our own situations and the situations of our friends, the discussion of the cross of Jesus can really be a test of friendship. The discussion of the cross of Jesus can be something that could go either way, proving that we are hopefully true friends and not false friends. What Peter was about in today's gospel was the mark of a false friend when he was trying to entice Jesus away from his cross. Do we ever do that with our friends? Imagine a couple teen people, young people out at night with the cross, if you will, of the obedience of having to get back home. And they call mom or dad with something like, um, yeah, well, we're, we're moving along. We're, we're, we'll be along in a little while. They keep it a little evasive. And the friend with them could be saying, tell them the truth. Tell them that we're out around exit 45 on the thruway. And it's about 10 minutes to midnight and we still have some way to come, and the weather isn't very good at all. Tell them the truth, says the good, true friend. Or some older people, where one says to the other, I just am not what I'm supposed to be. Something has been bothering me, and I'm afraid to talk about it. I'm scared stiff to go to a doctor. The true friend will say, call the doctor now. The true friend is not going to try to dissuade the person from the cross that God might be placing on his or her shoulders at a given moment. The true friend, rather, is the one who will get into the act and help the person to carry the cross. So let's examine our own hearts as to the truth value of our own friendship with those that we call our friends. Are we like Peter, trying to dissuade them from the right thing? Or are we the kind of friend that will bring forth some tough love and challenge the friend to do what he or she has to do in this situation. The choice is ours. Let us stand and let us profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten that made, one in being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born in the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Let us turn to the Lord and let us ask him to hear the petitions that we offer and to give us the grace to accept what Jesus wants of us. For our Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, that their continued service to the people of God will bear great fruit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all world leaders work to relieve the suffering and pain of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may always seek to see God in all we encounter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that this community of faith support one another in our effort to live the gospel faithfully and rejoice together in the new life we are given even now. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may be mindful of God's abundant love and healing power. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may be welcomed by the angels into the kingdom of God, especially Carrie Izzo, Helen Wheeler, Richard Carter, Charles Tellier, father of Joan Williams, and for Margaret Interlichia, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause for a moment and make our own private petitions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, give us the grace to accept our crosses, knowing that through the cross comes the resurrection, knowing through difficulties and problems that we can become stronger. If we but put our faith in you, help us to do that day in and day out. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in the offertory hymn, hymn number 649, You Are Mine, number 649.
Pray, my friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Lord, may this holy offering bring us your blessing and accomplish within us its promise of salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Out of love for a sinful man, he humbled himself to be born of the Virgin by suffering on the cross. He freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so with all the choirs of angels in heaven, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict our Pope, Matthew our Bishop, and all the clergy and all your people. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. May I have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we, who, uh, we, may we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with him. Peace be with him. Peace be with him. This is the Lamb of God, our Lord Jesus, who calls us to live in his love and to share his love forever. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Are there any ministers of communion that are going to take communion to the sick? Let us pray. Lord, you renew us at your table with the bread of life. May this food strengthen us in love and help us to serve you and each other. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Children's Liturgy is in need of volunteers to continue this important ministry for children. Please consider joining this team so this ministry can happen. We are extending our Giving Forward program into September in hopes of easing our cash flow at the beginning of our fiscal year. If you have already done so, thank you very much. If not, please consider helping out Holy Cross in this way. As we approach September, there are many upcoming activities. Please see our bulletin or website at holycrossregister.org for information regarding the opening of the new Holy Cross School, CYO sports sign-up, men's and women's retreats, and our annual time of renewal. There will be a coffee hour today after Mass, and please join in the recessional hymn, hymn number 661, The Church's One Foundation, number 661. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.